All right, so for problem one, we want to find the limit of this expression as x approaches two. Now, you always want to check first if you can just simply plug in the number and get you know a valid answer. But now here, when we plug in two for x, you're going to get four minus four in, in the denominator. So you're going to get an undefined expression. So what we want to do is do some algebraic trick, depending on what, you know, depending on what the expression says. Here, we're just going to factor. So we're going to factor the top into x plus 3 times x minus 2, and all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. And the x minus 2 groups cancel. And now you can simply substitute 2 in for x, because you're not going to get undefined expression. So when you substitute 2 in for x, you're going to get 2 plus 3 over 2 plus 2, or you'll get essentially 5 or 4. So your answer will be D. Now for number 2, we have f of x, and we want to find f prime of 2. So this is essentially telling you to find the value of the derivative when x is 2. So we're going to find the derivative expression and then plug in 2 for x, and we'll, we're going to get some number. So we take f prime of x by using the power rule, essentially, so we'll get 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then f prime of 2 will be 3 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1, which will be 3 times 4, so 12 minus 4 plus 1, so then 8. Nine, so then we'll get our answer is B. All right, number three. Which of the following definite integrals has the same value as this one right here? Okay, so here we're going to use U substitution, where we're going to make U equal to the X squared. So that basically the exponent here. And DU will be equal to um. 2x dx. Now, like the initial question is always like, well, how do you know what to make u? There's not like a formal, like like a formal formula or like a, a rule. It's it really comes down to practice. You gotta just practice a lot, you eventually see the patterns. Um, just like anything in math, you become better at it when you practice a lot. So that's really like all I can tell you because there's real honestly not uh uh a, a, a black and white rule that will always work. Anyways, so um, you see now we have essentially e to the u there. And we have our du there, but see we have um, 2x, but here we only got x. So what we have to do is divide each side by two. That way you get one half du is equal to x dx. And then we're good for what we have here, but let's just make it one half. Now, um, what's now what we have to look at now is see how we have the endpoints at zero and four. Now, let's remember that since this that, since this expression is in terms of x, we're looking at when x is zero and when x is four. So if we're going to rewrite this in terms of u, we have to change those into values of u by plugging in these values of x into the formula for u. If u is equal to x squared, when x is 0, u is also 0. And when x is 4, u will be 4 squared, or, or 16. So then our endpoints become 16 on top and 0 at the bottom. And then, so now we can match up integral, and our answer will be b. Right along. All right, which of the following is an equation of lying tangent to the graph of x squared minus 3x equals 10? Like, x squared minus 3xy equals 10 to the point 1, negative 3. OK, so <clears throat> essentially, we want to find the value of the derivative because the value of the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at some specific point. Now you can see your answers are what we call in point slope form. 
So the answers are essentially in this form where we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is just another way to write the equation for slope. Um, sometimes your calc teacher will initially just show you this um, at, and at some point or just remind you of it because it kind of will save you, it'll save you a few minutes of work when you're doing calculations. But this is just point slope form. Anyways, see like what this is saying is that we have our x1 and y1 as one and negative three. So we're looking at y minus a negative three. So y plus three is equal to m times x minus one. So we want to find the slope. The slope is the derivative of this function. And we want to find the derivative or the slope when x is one and y is negative three. So essentially, we're just going to um, um, solve, solve this equation for y and then find dy dx. Now, you can use implicit differentiation straight from here, or you can solve for y um, and then take the derivative. It doesn't really matter. I just went straight up and used implicit differentiation so I don't have to. Um, that's just my initial instinct. I don't have to worry about like, rearranging and stuff. So differentiating with respect to y or with respect to x, 2x. Here we have the um, product rule, 2x, put that in parentheses, 2x minus the derivative of 3x, which is just 3, times y plus 3x times the derivative of y, which is just 1, but implicitly it'll be dy dx equals the derivative of 10, which is 0. And see, now we're just solving for dy dx. We're doing some algebra. Let's, we're going to subtract this 3y. And we're going to add the 3y to both. Let me just rewrite it so I don't confuse any of you. Any of you. So we have this. Solve for dy dx. Get dy dx equals negative 2x plus 3y over negative 3x. And so we want to find dy dx at this point. So at one and negative three. And so then we'll have it that a negative two minus nine over negative three, or we'll get negative 11 over negative three, which is just positive 11 over three. So our slope is 11 thirds. So in our point slope form, this becomes at 11 thirds. And we just look for the one that matches up, and that's, as you can see, it's E. All right. Number five. For the function G, which intervals shown is the function G decreasing? OK, so for this, you want to essentially find the derivative of g and find where the derivative of g is negative. So this will be um, the part of the concepts you covered. It's usually in chapter three or four, where you're dealing with optimization, first derivative test, second derivative test, maximum minimum, that sort of thing. So let's first find the derivative of g. So g prime of x equals 3x squared over 3. That cancels so x squared plus 3x minus 70. Now we find the critical values by making g prime of x equal to zero, solving for the zeros. So we get zeros equal to x squared plus 3x minus 70, or zero equals x minus 7 times x plus 10. So see, then our two zeros would be at 7 and negative 10. So essentially, you want to see what's going on at the point at the intervals broken up at these two points. So broken up, breaking up the interval at negative 10, 7, you want to see what's the first derivative doing. Is it, what, is, it, what, is, it, what, is it positive or negative in each of those? So um, just do a test value. Pick any value in here. Like I, um, I just picked like negative twenty here. I'll just pick zero, and here I'll just pick ten, and find f prime of each of those. 
So I look at, let's say, f prime of negative 20 f prime of negative 20, just plug in negative 20 into here. You get 400 minus 60 minus 70. So that'll be positive. You don't actually have to find the number, but um, if it, it's usually, again, that's why you pick numbers that are gonna be like kind of easy to multiply to buy. Cause you, this part, remember this part of the exam, you don't want to get a calculator. So you, know, you don't want to be like wasting your time doing tedious calculations. See, I can just see that this is a positive number. So what I do is I'm gonna put a positive symbol here um, cause that's basically telling me the function's increasing. So I'm gonna put like an arrow going up. Then I find F prime of zero, find the sign there. Well, I should technically be putting G prime of zero. This is G, G prime of zero, zero, zero minus 70, which is negative 70. So I have a negative, meaning the function is decreasing, it's going downward. And then now I just check like F or G prime of 10, 100 plus 30, minus 70. And again, all I care is about the sign. Um, this will be a positive number, it's gonna be 60. So I put a positive symbol, so I know it's increasing there. So it's decreasing from negative 10 to seven. So then my answer will be D. Right, number six, we got the integral here. Now, um, this, you know, when you first learn this, um, you, you know, you're gonna use u substitution, you're gonna make u the denominator minus five, u equals five minus three x. Um, and when you have, you know, this, basically you're gonna have, you know, the integral one over u du, because I'm doing like, again, du will be negative three dx, divide both by negative three, and I'll get negative one third du equals dx. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna take out the negative one third here. Now usually when you do this, a, for, when you, after you do this a lot, you kind of write a graph off the top of your head, you'll pick up, oh, this is a nat, this is antiderivative will be the natural log of the absolute value, five minus three x, like, quickly, but I'm just going through the steps in case you need a little refresher. And then now, if I don't want to convert back to X, which I actually don't, I could just solve for these endpoints in terms of U. So I want to find what U is when X is two, when X is four. So when X is two, when X is four, kind of like what we did a few problems ago, I find the U values. When X is two, U is five minus three times two or five minus six, which is negative one. When x is four, u is five minus 12 or negative seven. So these endpoints become negative seven and negative one. Now I just integrate from here and now I don't have to worry about changing my variables back to x. So using the antiderivative, I'm gonna factor out the negative one third times the antiderivative of one over u, which is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we're gonna integrate from negative one to negative seven. So here's just the tedious part. But usually when you have these types of problems, just know these problems will usually not give you, like, you won't have to worry about complicated answers because they're not gonna let you use calculator here and they just wanna make sure you know the calculus. So you're gonna see this actually works out nicely. So we have the net natural log of seven minus the natural log of one. Remember the absolute value of negative numbers are just positive numbers. So the natural log of one is just zero. So all I have is really negative one third times the natural log of seven. And then so my answer would be, 